In today's tutorial, you will find out how to use Vray Next for Grasshopper to animate SubD objects parametrically. We will create a simple freeform SubD shape and discover how to transform SubD vertices and animate their movement. Let's get started. Hey guys, Dushan here. Before we start, if this is your first time here, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel as we upload new tutorials each week on Rhino and Grasshopper and how to use these tools specifically for architecture. All right, so here we are in Rhino 7, work in progress version. Uh, this is the version that you want to use for this to work. Let's go to perspective and let's create one single sub D plane. Now uh, let's keep the counts, let's say two by two. And I'm gonna start from zero point and let's say until uh, somewhere around here okay and I also want to make sure that uh, I have the the proper length so I will do scale 1d and I want to put this as 5 and also want to put this one as 5 like so okay so now we have this uh, single subdue plane and now let's create some uh, some some change here so first off let's uh, select all the vertices um, outside and let's move these this up like so so we want to create that uh, that shape and first i also want to add a little bit more edges here so i will select these edges i will say insert edge and let's put this to proportional and let's pick one edge here and in this case i want to use the reflect command so that i have the same um, distribution on the other side like so and now uh, I will do the same thing just on this side. Let's do uh, insert edge. And let's put something like here. And now let's do reflect again. This time on this side, like so. And you can see that we already have that shape almost done. Uh, and let's, let's put this uh, midpoint. Let's put it up, something like this. I will take these guys and I will put them to, let's say, let me just bring them down first. I want to make sure that I use the, the same the same uh, amounts. So I'm going to bring them down and then I'm going to bring them up, let's say 10, 10 units up. And uh, yeah, maybe five, yeah, that would be fine. And then uh, this guy can be somewhere here in the middle, like so. Uh, and of course, uh, if you want to play around uh, with uh, the shape and uh, how it looks, you can change these edges. So for example, if you take these edges, if we, uh, if we move them, they'll be also um, moving on, on the other side as well. The same thing goes here. So let's do the reflect again on this side, like so. Uh, let's use them. And let's bring them a little bit like so. All right. And if I go to the side view, I want to make sure that I have this uh, on the same plane. So I'll select these guys, bring them down like this. And I also want to bring this one. I want to bring it down like so. Okay, so something like this. Here we can move it a little bit up and so on. So we get that, that initial shape. And now let's see how we can multiply this. So first off, what I can do, I can simply use reflect one more time, but this time I'm going to start from the edge here, like so. Uh, and I'm gonna pick this point, click enter, and now I have another one. And that's what we're gonna be using this shape for our animation. I'm going to, uh, to rotate it 90 degrees, and let's put it uh, onto the zero like so. And I think we're almost done with the creation of the sub D. Um, we can kill the reflection. We can simply use reflect command and we can say remove existing symmetry. And that's it. Now these two are completely independent. Now let's go to Grasshopper and let's see how we can create uh, animation and a definition for this. Before going there, I just want to, let me just see. Oh, I don't need the color back faces. And I want to make sure that I have the some kind of base plan so I'm going to create one big rectangle here like so and I'm gonna put it somewhere here in the middle like so and uh, with this uh, we, we want to have some kind of you know like a base plan let's do planner surface and that will be our 
surface here. Uh, the angle is going to be something like something like this, I think. And uh, we can save that in the named use here. Okay, so that's that's what we have. Uh, the animation is going to happen if, uh, in, in this case, uh, let me lock this or actually just hide it. So the animation is going to happen uh, with these vertices. So I'm going to animate the movement of these vertices and they're going to go back like this. And that's going to be the animation. So uh, the way to do this is the following. So let's go to the grasshopper now and let's create uh, this definition. All right, so the first thing, let's uh, let's put bifocals so you guys can see uh, the names of the of the components. And first, let's start with the sub D. So I'm going to use the sub D component. And then I'm going to use uh, the component sub D uh, control polygon. And I will simply select my sub D, right click, set one sub D here. Uh, and then I'm going to move it here. And this will actually create a mesh for my control polygon. So now I'm going to hide this, this guy so that you see only uh, the mesh. Here it is. And then uh, moving on, we need to deconstruct this mesh. So we need to, uh, to say to Grasshopper which are the points that we want to animate. So in this case, uh, we need to use the component called uh, deconstruct mesh. Here it is. And uh, once I do this, I will have a list of points. And now I have a points that uh, a list of points that I want to manipulate. So to, to do this, to actually see which points I'm, I'm using, I'm going to use a point list, and I'm going to simply bring the vertices to the points, and I'm also going to increase the size. So let's say something like this, and uh, this will give me some some you know uh, visibility of of which points I want to take. So. In this case, I'm also going to hide this so I can see my numbers. So you can see which ones we need. We need 24, 2, 0, 22, 44, and 26. So first off, I'm simply going to open my notepad and I'm going to type these numbers so I have them. Now I'm going to simply copy these guys and I'm going to put them here in the panel. Right click, copy paste. And here I want to use uh, multi-line data. Uh, this will actually uh, give me the selection of these points. So uh, why I'm doing this? Because I want uh, to control these points only. I want to control the movement of these points. So in order to control the movement of these points, we need to give them some kind of a movement factor, right? So let's create a move component here and let's put them into the motion. So I'm going to use, uh, in this case, X factor and or we're going to be using here, for example, let's say something like 15, for example. Well, that's maybe too much, but let's see. So this is going to be the movement. And here, if I do this, if I do, for example, list item, and I put the list of these points here, and I put all of these uh, indices here, this will actually select only, as you can see, it will select only my points, if I click here, only these points are selected. And if I want to move them, you can see that uh, this is their movement. So they're moving in this direction. So if I want to change the direction, all I need to do is type the negative and then put it here. And this will reverse the direction. So now they're going in the back like this. So you can see while I'm moving this, the points are moving. However, we need to, of course, rebuild this mesh. And we need to use this mesh so that we can create a sub D later on. So, so the point here is to use a component called uh, replace items. So we're going to use replace items and we're going to connect this list now. So this means that uh, what we need to do, we need to say, okay, these are the original vertices and these are the items that we need to, that, that are actually going to be changed. And in terms of the vertices themselves, we need to take the same ones, like so. In this case, when we create this list, you can see that now we have the list of all of these points. And now, at this point, we need to actually uh, create the new mesh, which is based on this movement. So, to do this, we need to use the component called uh, Construct Mesh. And uh, we simply need to use these uh, vertices from this list. 
but it's important that we have the same faces from 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 this mesh so once we do this you can see that uh, we have this new shape that's uh, taking place so for example here if i change this number you can see how a new mesh is being formed and that's exactly uh, what we need and now i'm going to of course uh, hide this uh, initial mesh so we have our new mesh here and uh and on top of that now we're going to be uh, creating creating new uh, new sub D and we simply need to use the component sub D uh, from mesh give it the mesh here and uh, you can already see in my viewport how this sub D will look like however if uh, because we want to render this we want to create rendering we need to convert back this to 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 a mesh so we need to create mesh from sub D and in this case let's give it let's say a density of 5 for this mesh here and now you can see that uh, we have this mesh which is, which is going to be rendered and of course if I change the position this mesh is also going to be changing and it's also going to be uh, taking place into our rendering okay so now we have that part done and now it's 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 time to create uh, the rendering part of it the V-Ray uh, components so let me first uh, deselect these guys that we are not going to be uh, needing so we have a nice nice view here of the things that we are animating so this is going to be the slider that is going to be our animation and also this slider is going to be influenced by the timeline slider that we're going to be creating so let's create timeline V-Ray timeline and let's create some of those additional uh, things that we need from V-Ray so I'm going to go to the V-Ray options here and let's put for example material from file we need two materials then we also need uh, the main one, which is uh, V-Ray Render. Here it is, V-Ray Camera, and also uh, V-Ray Render. We also need a V-Ray Geometry here. We need two of those, one for our mesh and one for our background, for our uh, floor. And we also need a light rig, which is going to be a light dome. And then we simply need to populate these guys with additional things that are necessary. So for example, Let's use here Boolean toggle. Let's put both of these to true. Put them here. Uh, here we need one file path. This is the place for our texture. This is where I'll put my uh, edge dry image and intensity rotation and background. Let's also put some sliders. So I'm going to say one here. I'm going to use the rotation of, let's say, 540, something like this. And background intensity, let's put this to, let's say, 1. Or maybe 0 if you don't want the background. Uh, and that will be it. Uh, regarding the, the camera, if you want to set that camera, all you need to do is come, come back here. And then uh, this is the view from, from uh, our Rhino viewport. And then you simply need to go here, right click, get from active Rhino viewport. This will create a camera. And if you go here, you will see that we have this camera created right away. Okay, so after that, uh, we simply need to put some additional parameters here. So I'm going to go engine right click, extract, extract, uh, extract, and also quality extract. So the quality, I want to put high. I want to use the bucket one if you're using the, the production render. And the CPU is fine. And here I also want to use the light rig. So the light rig is going to go here. And V-Ray geometry, we have two of these. So first geometry is going to be our, uh, let's say our base plan. So let's uncover it like so. And I'm going to select it. I'm going to go right click uh, and type mm, geometry, right click, set one geometry. I'm going to put uh, it here and also I'm going to choose my material. So I'm going to choose the material here like so. And also I'm going to put that one in here. Visible is going to be true. Uh, the same thing is going to be here so i'm going to put visible here i'm going to put this material here and this is going to be my, my geometry in this case i will put some some additional material that i have for example red one and uh, now we have these two geometries that we need to render out we need to connect them here in the array geometry like so and we also need to put the file path for our edge dry image. So I'm going to right click here and choose my image. And once we're ready, we can put the camera here. 
and we can do a test render. So now I think we're ready. Now all we need to do is also uh, create uh, the, the texture mapping for our plane. So I'll put the texture here. I'm gonna apply box mapping and let's put something like 7.5, 7.5 and 7.5. That's gonna be fine. And now let's uh, do our test render. All right, so here is the on the cache render. We can see that everything is looking fine. That's exactly what we wanted. And now uh, how to create the actual animation. So this is the test that we did and it's uh, pretty good. And of course, uh, this is going to be just a single frame. If you want to create an animation, you need to, to put the timeline component. So this is the last part. So this timeline component needs to be integrated with this slider. So uh, in order to do this, we need to use a simple technique. So for example, if you want to create an animation that is, uh, let's say three seconds, and if one second has 30 frames, then we want the frame counts to be, uh, to be 90. So I'm gonna put 90 frames here. And by changing this, I need to actually change this slider. And let's say that I want the maximum of my change of my animation to be something like, let's say 15 here. So let's say that this is the, or maybe it's too much. So for example, 13, 14, depending on how big your model is. So let's say in this case, uh, 12 or 11, something like this. So you want 11 from zero to 11 to have 90 frames. And the way that you need to do this is you need to simply remap uh, some numbers. So I'm gonna use remap component, remap numbers, and I'm going to put the values of these frames here and the source is going to be from 0 to uh, 89. So let me create one panel here, like so. And I can simply say 0 to 89. That's going to be the frames. So this is my source and my target is going to be from 0 to 15. So I'm going to say 0 to 15. OK, click here and uh, we're ready. And now, for example, uh, when I change this slider, uh, these these are the numbers that are going to uh, come out. So, for example, if it's frame zero, it's going to be at, at position zero. But if I change this frame, you can see how my 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 numbers here are changing slowly. So in frame 31, I'm going to come to 5.2 and then all the way up, uh, it's going to come at 15. That's exactly what we need. So we need to put that here. And this was just for for testing purposes. And once we have that, we're, we're completely ready. And now if I change this uh, timeline, you can see how my uh, animation is changing as well. That's exactly what we need. And now we simply need to connect this timeline here. And I also like to double click here to create this like a zipper in case you want to, you know, disconnect this and test it and then reconnect it later on. So now uh, all we need to do is adjust if you want to change the resolution. So the resolution is here. Uh, 960 by 540 if you want to change those numbers you can then simply right click render animation and you will start the the rendering of the frames last thing i forgot you need to put also the output image locations so you need to uh, create here the place of the folder where you want your image to be and this is the final result this is the animation that we just created you can see how our sub vertices are animated and how they're moving the whole structure so now you finally have an idea of how you can animate sub d objects from minus 7 with v-ray for grasshop in case you'd like to go a step further and find out how to create a definition that will allow you to select the sub d faces and animate their movement instead of just using the sub d vertices you can watch that extended tutorial version on our patreon page the link is in the description with that you will also get access to all of our extended tutorials and project files i'd like to thank all of our patreons thank you guys for the support if you like what we do please consider becoming patreon yourself and if you like a structured approach to learning right now grasshopper architecture presentation and rendering, you can apply for our Rhino for Architects 2.0 course, first link in the description. See you soon.